Hi, and welcome to this, the first of what I hope to be many video blogs on auto harp related issues. I'm going to have some for um, techniques, playing techniques, finger picking, um, left hand techniques, um, anything that you want me to cover. I'm going to have some on um, uh, pimping your auto harp, pimping your picks, um, on memorization, all kinds of different things. I have about uh, 40, 45 different topics that uh, I've thought of already that I want to cover. And like I say, if you have something you want me to cover, contact me through my web page, which is halweeks.com. Um, you can contact me through YouTube. You can contact me through Facebook. Contact me. Let me know what you want to hear about, and I will see what I can work up for you. This first installment is uh, about making a louder plastic pick. Picks. Um, it's a very personal issue and one of the very common questions that we see on the Auto Heart forums is what is the best kind of pick to use? And you know what? Nobody can answer that question because it's that's the most personal part of playing an auto harp is your picks and how your hands touch the instrument. That's the intimate place of contact. And unfortunately, there's no way to know ahead of time until you purchase the things, take them home, and play them if they're going to work for you or not. And what works for you now may not a year down the road or two years down the road. So be prepared to constantly be experimenting with your picks and trying different picks. Fortunately, most of them are not that expensive. Some of them these days are. But um, I like plastic picks. Some people like metal picks. Some people prefer bare fingers uh, or people fingers. Um, and um, I like plastic picks because they have a nice mellow sound. The auto harp is already a little bit too sparkly and the um, metal picks just make it even sparklier and um, so I prefer the the darker tone of the plastic picks but plastic picks aren't as loud as metal picks and so I have developed a way to make a louder plastic pick that I'm going to share with you today first I want to show you what I don't like about metal picks and I have some metal picks back from my old metal picking days When metal picks encounter a wound auto harp string, I don't know if you can hear the swishy sound. The only way to eliminate that is to turn your harp so that the strings are straight and the pick comes right across it instead of having an edge to it. But your harp is usually angled, and it should be. You should not play straight up and down. And, or you can turn your hand like this, but you should not be playing like this either. You should have a nice straight wrist and an angled auto harp, which means you get the swishy, swishy, swishy sound from the metal picks. I don't like that. I do like... the padding sounds that you can get from a metal pick. You can't really get very good ones from plastic picks. You can do it, but it's not as loud. So, I prefer plastic picks because they have a darker tone and they don't make that swishy, swishy, swishy sound on... Maybe you like that sound. I hate that sound. Um, so I use the plastic picks. not very much swishy sound in the bass notes on the, on the wound strings. That's why I prefer the plastic picks. But plastic picks are not as loud, especially in a jam session or if you're outdoors busking 
playing outside and you need to project, you need a louder pick. Um, so I took my Acri picks, which are metal picks, and they're great for staying on um, because they go, they ride way up your finger. Let me hold this against the black so you can see it. It goes way up past all the way to your to your joint, your finger joint. Okay. So they stay on really well, but they're extremely loud and they're extremely um, brash sounding, um, and I don't like that at all. Um, so I discovered how to put plastic tips onto my Acri picks. And if I hold it right there, my camera should focus better. I'm going to let you see it from all angles, and especially from this angle. Notice that the plastic tip extends over the edge of the metal by about a sixteenth of an inch, just a tiny little bit. Okay, now how do I do that? Well, I'm going to sacrifice an old pick. This one's been in use now for about five years, and it's not the least bit worn, but uh, I, for the sake of this video, I'm going to I'm going to cut it and I'm going to show you what I do. And I don't usually mark them when I cut them, but I'm going to mark it for the sake of this video. There, about halfway up the blade is where I'm going to make my first cut. And I use wire snippers. These are little lineman's pliers with wire snippers at the back. And I'm just going to snip it right on that line. And this is what I end up with. That's what I've got now. Looks like a fingernail. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to snip off these corners. Okay. And I could mark that, but I think you get the idea. I'm just going to snip the corners like that. And like that. They don't have to be even because they're all going to get filed later. It's just a matter of getting it so that it doesn't have sharp corners on it. It's going to be more circular when it's done. So you end up with a shape that's sort of like that. All right. Now when you put it on a metal pick, and you don't have to do this on Acres, you could do this on, on Dunlops too. You're going to use super glue and you're going to glue it right at the edge so that it hangs over just a little bit and pay close attention to how bendy the tip of your metal pick is because if your plastic tip isn't as bendy um, you're going to want to bend it a little bit and you can do that with hot water um, and some pliers you just dip it in hold it for 10 seconds in the boiling water pull it out and then bend it a little bit so that it conforms to the shape of the tip a little bit better and um, when you glue it on I use super glue. My favorite is Gorilla Glue. And I use the gap filling because there's usually a little pocket behind it that needs to be filled in with the super glue. No, they don't come off. I have been doing this for 10 years and I've only had one pop off ever. Um, so you glue it on and then if you get the, you have to put it on the end of the pick. I'm not going to actually do gluing today, but you put it on the end of the pick, hanging over a little bit, you put one drop of glue on the end of the pick, and then put the pick over it and slide it around till it fits. And yes, I do get a little super glue on my fingertips, so I try to avoid um, holding it for too long so that my pick doesn't get glued to my hand. Uh, I might use 
needle nose pliers like this to hold it after I get it in place because you have to kind of clamp it for about three minutes while it sets up and then let it set it aside do your next pick do your next pick and then you're going to come back to them and look around the bottom edges and see if there's any gap and there usually is take a toothpick dip it in a little bit of super glue and go under there and fill in the gap with glue then let that dry fully and then take a file and you're going to file around the bottom edge and around the edge to take care of the sharp lip that's down there because you don't want anything catching the string and this is the part that takes the most patience you just have to shape it and sand it and sand it down and sand it down and sand it down you might have different shaped files you might have some that are coarser go ahead use the coarse ones get finer and finer and finer keep trying it on the harp and make sure that the edges don't grab if you get a grab and you will at first file it down more until you have a perfectly smooth edge. Let me get my white one, you'll see it better. Perfectly smooth edge. It sticks up a little bit, but it doesn't catch the string. So now you have a nicely sanded... It will mar the, the surface, the, the metal, a little bit. Um, but we're going for audio aesthetics, not visual aesthetics here. Um, sand it down, make it nice and smooth so that there's no lip for it to catch on. And then you have a well-made metal and plastic pick that will be twice as loud. I'm going to demonstrate that for you. Also, by the way, my acres, I line them with foam. It's a sticky back foam tape. You may already know about it. It's medical tape. You get it at the pharmacy. It's stretchy. And it's the color of Silly Putty. And um, I put a single layer inside the pick, and it helps with sweat, and it helps with um, friction. It holds my finger better. But these picks are twice as loud as a, me uh, a plastic pick. And I'm going to show you that. All right, plastic. Plastic tipped metal. The, the swishy sound is much less than a straight metal pick. So now I'll show you the whole set, what it sounds like. You'll see how loud it can be. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. Okay. Plus you get the nice padding sounds because you've got such a big metal area. So there you have it. That's how you make a nice metal pick with a plastic tip. Best of both worlds. I still play with the plastic, the all plastic picks most of the time when I'm solo playing, recording, stuff like that because I like the darker tone. But when I need to be louder and I don't want that slinky sound, I use my louder plastic pick. So thanks for tuning in. I know this has gone on for a while. Um, and look, remember to subscribe to my YouTube page because you'll get notified as soon as I post that new video. And um, you'll know a week before everybody else does. So. Um, Thanks for, for tuning in, and I look forward to many more of these. Thanks a lot. Bye.